Greetings and salutations, this is Felly Cat and welcome back to Dream Daddy. We have one more first date left. Let's let's get get talking to Robert here. <coughs> He's so mysterious. Robert was pretty nice. A little odd, but nice. And ruggedly handsome. We should hang out. I type out a message to him on that book. Hey Robert, good seeing you again at the cookout. Wanna grab a drink? I sit there for a couple of seconds, hoping he'll message me back. Hey, it says that he read my message. I anxiously wait for a response. Watch cat videos! I start down a rabbit hole of cat videos and Robert quickly vanishes from my mind. I didn't realize how long I'd been doing this, but by the time I watch maybe my 30th cat video, Robert pops back into my head. I jump back over to Dadbook to see if he's responded yet. Nothing. Well, I guess the guy's busy. I might also make the best of my day. I get up, walk to the living room, and sit down and turn on the TV. Uh, history channel. Ooh, naked and afraid, catching the deadliest ancient aliens is on. Oh my god! My mother is like obsessed with this show, Naked and Afraid. It's just, uh, I just, I can't. I just can't do this reality TV crap. I'm so cold. I'm so scared. Yep. At this rate, I don't think we're gonna catch these aliens by day 50. <laughs> day 50?! Oh dear god, they would literally die in that amount of time. I'm having trouble following this. Ancient astronaut theorists predict that being naked makes you ten times more likely to find ancient aliens. Some suggest the aliens are fascinated with the human physique. Most notably the butt. <laughs> okay, I'm back in. <laughs> I lose several hours to whatever the hell that was. Sonny, I get up and walk around the house. My stomach grumbles. <laughs> time for lunch, huh? Well, I guess it's time for little Chef, chef Senrak to cook up a gourmet delicacy. I walk over to the refrigerator and open the door. Ew! Make a sandwich. I make a sandwich in its entirety while standing there. Who needs plates? The sandwich. A lost art. I admire my work for a second before I clumsily drop the entire thing on the floor. No! I look around and remember that Amanda's not home. This is still good. Five second rule, right? I reassemble my sandwich, peeling pickles off the floor and putting them back where they belong. In my mouth! <laughs> Wait, I'm a wreck. I finish my snack and walk around the house some more bored. When's Amanda coming home? Oh, I just remembered something. When we were packing up the old house, we found that old basketball hoop that would hang off of a door. It would really bring the living room together. I wonder where I put that. I spend a couple minutes looking around the new place until I find it. After installing it above one of the doors in the living room, I'm ready to dunk. Come on and slam. I take a leap from the free throw line and rocket that sucker down the net. The crowd goes wild. And welcome to the jam. I pull up from the three point line, breaking ankles and sinking a fade away. And I forgot the rest of the words to this song. No look behind the back hook shot. Everyone's on their feet. Something, something, Space Jam. I managed to just barely defeat myself a horse before Amanda comes home. Then we cook dinner together. We're proud of ourselves for not even coming close to burning down the house. Afterward, Amanda and I dig into a carton of ice cream over an episode of Chopped Toddler Tournament. What? What you have in front of you is a molecularly deconstructed sweet potato with brown sugar demic glacé with creme fraiche of course. What? This is literally a jar of baby food. The toddler immediately bursts into tears. Mm. Are we bad people for watching this? Yes. Just then my computer dings. Huh? What's that? Oh, you probably just got a message. Amanda and I walk over to the computer and check dad book. It's a message from Robert. You up? Uh, what, what? What does that mean? What are you doing? What am I doing? 
You're just chilling. I'm just chilling. Watching TV with my daughter. Hey. Wow, Dad, pretty square. A couple moments pass by, another message pops up. Wanna grab a drink? Hey, that means he wants to hang out! I know what that means, Amanda. But it's kinda late. Come on, Pops, live a little. I am living with ice cream and traumatized toddlers. <laughs> well, it's your life, but I think you'd have a lot of fun tonight. You are trying to get to know the neighbors better, aren't you? Ugh, fine. I type back a message to Robert asking him for details, and he tells me to meet him at Jim and Kim's. Well, don't wait up for me. I never do. I threw on an ice jacket and ran out the door. It's only a short walk to Jim and Kim's, and it's a beautiful night. I walk into the bar and see the usual crowd of bar players drinking beer and watching sports. I spot Robert at the back of the bar and wave hi as I walk over. Hey man, how's it going? Hey buddy. Oh. Boy there, Skipper. Oh god, it's you again. Robert and Mary are here? Uh oh. <laughs> I brought Mary along. Figured we needed a drink, buddy. Aw oh, man, I was excited to get to know Robert a little better. Now I have to deal with this weird married lady making passes at me. Ugh. Don't look so scared, kiddo. We're just having a drink. Oh. Yeah, speaking of which, I think it's time for the first round. What are you having? Hmm. Uh... Uh, this is what I would actually choose, but... Whiskey straight up. Dad after my own heart, huh? Okay. This wasn't how I expected my night to be going. Hey. Here's the bad decisions and relaxed moral values, fellas. What have I got myself into? Well, knock back the shots. I almost choke on the whiskey as it burns down my throat. Holy hell, that was a kick. I look over at Robert and Mary, who seem like old pros at this. Robert grabs his jacket and throws it on. Uh. Let's get marching. What? Uh. The night's young, Chief. Come on, we're bar hopping. Oh, all right. We leave the bar and start walking down the street. I still don't know this area of town very well, so I just follow Robert. So, where are we headed? Irish, I were drinking. It's an Irish pub. A good pun is the whiskey to my heart. <sighs> Come on. <laughs> Puns are the lowest form of humor, Chris. Try harder. Actually, no, they're not. They're a sign of intelligence and sharp wit. Ouch. Am I gonna be the butt of the joke all night? <sighs> Jesus, Mary, put your fangs away for a second. We walk into Irish, I were drinking. The bar is pretty much the same as Jim and Kim's, except for the old timey Irish memorabilia on the wall, which is really cool, by the way. I'd love to see that. Next round, what are you having? Eh, this is a good beer this time. Again, I respect your live style decisions while I may not necessarily agree with them. Still, though, my question was rhetorical. Modern <laughs> orders three more glasses of whiskey, and we post them up in Gary Screen booth. Mary slides in and settles them next to Robert, which makes you breathe a sigh of relief. Oh? Let's sip this one, why don't we? Ah. Seat yourself. Harry immediately downs her shot in one gulp and burps loudly. Ah. That'll put hair on your chest. You are truly the paragon of grace and beauty. Ah. Mary grabs my drink and sips on it. Ah. Hey! Mm. Chris, be a dear and get us another round, will ya? Uh -huh. I don't know how to process this evening at all. I get up and order another round of drinks to the bartender. As I head back, I see Mary and Robert having a lively conversation. Robert roars with laughter. I don't think I've ever seen the guy smile, let alone laugh. Take a seat across the booth from them and pass out the drinks. Hey. So Edith's kid snuck some pot brownies onto the table at the last bake sale, right? And I spot that little hemp sweatshirted gremlin in the act, so I go up to Edith with the bag again. I'm about to tell, tell her when all of a sudden she just freaks out at me. You're ruining the bake sale, she says. I should have MPT a president. Your roots are bad, I and blah blah blah. Mm. So what'd you do? I told her to have a brownie and then everything was gonna be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Both erupt in laughter. I politely follow along with the story. I... She ate three. Oh <laughs> my god. Okay, that was actually pretty funny. Hey. <laughs> she called the cops and told them the time had stopped. <laughs> ah, that's that's a common reaction to eating three freaking pot brownies. Come hey. on. Mary looks directly at me. Do you smoke weed? What? Hmm. You know, the devil's lettuce. I Hey. <laughs> I have two big fat plants in my purse right now. One ablaze? Oh my god. Uh uh, uh. It's legal here. I am a law abiding citizen. Weed is legal in Massachusetts. Then I am a super law abiding citizen. <laughs> hey. 
I'm just kidding, cowboy. Mm-hmm. Lay off the kid, Mary. You might not be used to your brand of humor. Ah. Fine, fine. Ah. Sit around and sip our drinks. People watching and cracking jokes. After a little bit of time, they begin to warm up to Mary. Her jokes become much funnier and much less scary. And I thought she ordered whiskey. Why is she having a glass of... Well, then maybe she ordered wine later. I don't know. But it seems like she's not going anywhere anytime soon. I just wanted to some time alone with Robert. I wonder if I can get her to leave somehow. Uh, could you get the next round? You trying to ditch me, pal? I... No. Because if you're trying to ditch me, you can just tell me to scram. I just... No, no, it's fine. Chris wants a long time with his new best buddy, Robert. Re- read you loud and clear, though you may have information to pursue their prey. Uh? Now, if you fellows don't excuse me, Mary needs to sink her teeth into a helpless boy. Go with God. Nice seeing you. That should be capitalized! Deuces, nerds. Mary gets up and saunters over to a younger looking guy at the bar. <laughs> she grows on you. Does she, though? I feel like she kind of delights in making men suffer. Huh. Well, she does. But what about her and Joseph? Uh-huh. What about them? You know, they're married, and she definitely tried to get my pants the other night, and I gestured to her across the bar while she's making you guys at that young guy from before. He looks like he's being held hostage. I... Oh, that's just a thing she does. She's harmless. Tell that to the boy she's hanging off of. Poor kid looks like he's seen war. Ha! <laughs> hey, I got him to laugh. Oh, man, you know I picked you for one of those straight lace types. Oh, don't worry. I got pretty wild back in my day. Mm. Still got a little wild in you? I have a child to care for! <laughs> you know it. Robert orders a couple more rounds of shots. I gulp. What am I getting myself into? Mm-hmm. Think you can go shot for shot? Um, there's only one way to look cool here. I grab the shot closest to me and down it. Robert looks impressed. He takes a shot and knocks it back. Mm-hmm. That's one. So... What do I even talk about? He's so cool, and he probably hates small talk. Uh, so how are things? Hey. I hate small talk. Okay. Huh. Too many people, and this isn't necessarily you, but too many people think that they have to fill the dead air with noise. Personally, I think they're afraid of the silence, or they're afraid of what the other person is going to think of the silence. Oh. If you want some unsolicited advice, just learn to be comfortable with silence. Mm. Nothing wrong with two people sitting in silence and drinking whiskey. Oh, all right. I... Robert and I sit in silence and drink whiskey. I take in the rest of the bar. Patrons laughing, playing darts, spilling beer. Mary giving the hard sell to the, that young man. The young man pretending he got a phone call from one of his friends. Huh. Maybe silence is nice sometimes. So, you ever kill a man? I choke on my drink. Excuse me? Uh-huh. You know, watch, watch the life drain from someone's eyes. It's not just their life, you know. It's their hopes and dreams draining away. Every memory and experience they've ever had. Gone. Uh, no. Hey. Great, me neither. <laughs> oh boy. Mm-hmm. I'm just messing with you. Relax. I laugh nervously. Oh. <clears throat> or am I? I laugh nervously again. We sip more whiskey and people watch some more. Mary has her sights set on another man after the other one excuse himself to the bathroom and I, assume, crawled out the window. Gosh, this whiskey's hitting me hard. Gosh, this whiskey's hitting me hard. You betcha. Robert gets up out of the booth, shouldering his jacket. Oh. Let's roll! Oh. Sorry. Whiskey. Inside voices. Hey. Let's roll. Wait, what about Mary? Uh. Brother Mary is gonna be just fine. I look over at Mary, who's lying on the bar in front of some poor zap. She's singing happy birthday to him while he insists that it's not his birthday. Oh, lordy. We make our way out of the bar and back onto the street. I'm trying my hardest not to stumble, but man, that sidewalk is just coming right at me. I hope Robert doesn't notice me tripping over my own feet like this is the first time I've ever been drunk. Where to? Mm. You'll see. Oh, liquor store, of course. I follow Robert through street lamp spotlights until we eventually arrive at a rundown strip mall. There's a beauty salon, a sex shop, a computer repair store that looks like it's been closed for 10 years, and finally, a liquor store. Hey. Wait here, I'll be right back. After a minute, Robert returns with two wine bottles and brown paper bags. He hands one to me. Cheers. He sits on the curb and drinks. He motions for me to do the same. This is really not where I expected the night to go. I take a sip. 
Why it's Infidel? What? Nothing. I just wasn't expecting... It is delicious, fruity, and refreshing. Don't judge me. I start to say something, think of his lecture about valuing silence earlier, and stop. I sip my wine and watch cars drive by. Oh. Let's throw rocks at shit. What? Robert suddenly hurls a rock at a stop sign. The ding echoes throughout the empty parking lot. Mm. I felt good. He presses a stone in my free hand. Now you try. Uh, I don't know. Huh. With feeling. I look at the rock in my hand and look at the stop sign. Back at the rock, back at the stop sign. I know what has to be done. <sighs> Itch. This one's for you, Pappy? I have unresolved resentment toward my father. I'm gonna express it through property damage. I hurl the rock at the sign and it sails over the stop sign. Right into the window of a parked car! Oh no! Leaving a crack. Really? Dude, run! <laughs> I leap up and dart into the nearest alley, wide in hand. I can hear Robert's footsteps behind me. After I'm sure I'm far enough away from the crack window that I am no longer culpable for this heinous crime, I stop to catch my breath. Hmm. Maybe we strike, strike rock throwing from the to-do list. Agreed. Isn't this the alley where we bought oregano from Lucian? <clears throat> Save Van and all. Suddenly my stomach growls. Oh man, I am starving. <laughs> Let's get pizza. I can't argue with that. Where's What's good around here? Actually, I don't even care if it's good. It just needs to be edible in my mouth in the next five minutes. Mm. I know just the place. Follow Robert through a maze of alleys and side streets until we eventually end up in front of a tiny hole in the wall pizza joint. Bright red neon sign... Reads Pete's Pizza Pizza. Blah. Ta-da. I can see a few exhausted looking works behind the counter tossing dough and pulling piping hot pieces right out of stone ovens. My stomach rumbles again. We go up to the counter and get ready to order. Oh. Can I get two slices of Hawaiian pizza? Oh wait, Chris, you're cool with pineapple on your pizza, right? Of course. I love pineapple on pizza. It's the best. We wait a minute for our pizza to come out of the oven. I'm practically drooling at the smell. Cashier hands us each a giant slice on a paper plate so saturated with grease that I'm worried it will fall apart. We take our pizzas outside and wander through the alleyways as we eat. I take a bite. It's absolutely delicious. Pineapple is truly the best, best pizza topping. Mm. You said it. Man, I feel way better now. Mm. You and me both. I hear a noise coming out of a slightly ajar door in the alleyway. Robert looks at me excitedly. Mm. Got any more of that wild in you? Uh... You betcha. Good on ya. Robert and I slide the door open and peeks inside. It's completely dark except for some flickering, flickering light. We slowly creep forward, cautious not to be heard or seen. Shh! Oh, it's a movie theater. Don't shush me so loud. Shh! We come to the end of the hallway and find ourselves sitting in front of a movie screen. Oh, this suddenly makes sense. Did we really just sneak into a movie theater like a couple of teenagers? No talking during the movie. We look into the audience and are surprised to find that it's almost completely empty, save for a row of a few teenagers in the front. They look annoyed when they notice us. Robert starts making his way to the very back of the theater and I follow him. We settle in with our wines to try to make sense of the movie. It's a romantic comedy, I think. A young man is frantically trying to get through in New York to find the woman that he's finally realized he's in love with. Kiss already! There's nobody to kiss yet. You want him to kiss the taxi driver? Hell yeah! The kids down the way know this is heckling. One of them speaks up. Hey man, keep it down. Oh my god, it's you again. Oh damn, that's Ernest Hemingway. He goes kid. Ernest! Hey Ernest, I know you, it's me, your neighbor. Hi! Ernest turns back around, embarrassed. I turn back to Robert. He kiss anyone yet? It turns out that yes, he did kiss someone. He made his way out to a tiny island near New York to profess his love for a woman who, for some reason, he knew would be there. She tells him that they hit the jackpot he said that they had, but I think there was some subtext I'm missing here. Boo! Love is dead. Shut up! It's beautiful! No, you shut up. Ernest grumbles. The credits start to roll. I stand up. Robert immediately pulls me back down. Hundreds of people worked very hard to make this all happen, and you're doing to sit here and appreciate them. Yeah, I, I actually do the same thing. Uh, okay. Look at that, Elizabeth Shelton. She worked really hard. I bet she did lots of good um, wardrobe design. Thank you, Elizabeth Shelton, for this beautiful film learning experience. And Peter Anders, catering, fed a bunch of people so that they could have the energy to do their jobs. What a guy. We let the credits roll while Robert individually thanks every member of the crew. Once it's finally over, he makes his way 
and he makes sure no animals are harmed in the making of this film, we leave the movie theater. <laughs> we stumble out to the theater parking lot. That's not a parking lot, that's the same alley. Polishing off the rest of the wine. Hey, assholes. Out of nowhere, a rock flies through the air and hits me on the knee. My knee! What the hell? Ernest and his friends stand in the alleyway, blocking our exit. Oh, what do you guys want? Why'd you go and throw a rock at my knee? This is my good knee. My orthopedist is gonna be pissed. Ernest tosses another rock up and down in his hands. What's wrong with this kid? You turn, you ruined my theater going experience. Now you have to pay. Oh, well, I don't have any cash on me right now, and like, movies got really expensive. Ernest tucks another rock on my other knee. I'm able to jump out of the way, but I, but I didn't properly stretch before physical activity, and I'm probably gonna feel super sore in the morning. Huh. We ruined it for you? That movie was pretty crappy in the first place. Hey, you take that back. That was a beautiful love story with really genuine acting. <clears throat> you call that good acting? What class what classicist mainstream slop have you served you entire have you what? Whatever that means. What? Really? Have you ever even seen um, any Michael Powell? A matter of life and death, nineteen forty six. Easily the toughest five minutes of love you'll ever witness. Listen, man. What? No, you listen. That popcorn ass rival of mass media is showing, is shoving down your throat will only make you dumber and sadder. You of all people should strive for a higher standard in the art you consume. Your name is Ernest Hemingway, for Christ's sakes. <laughs> oh no, now you've done it. Ernest rushes Robert, screaming like a banshee. <laughs> I dive between Ernest and Robert, trying to stop the kid. He lunges forward, kicking me as hard as he can in the knee. Fuck my knee! <laughs> Robert gets in between Ernest and myself. It's as if he's seeing red. Fuck, my fucking knee hurts. No one hurts my friend. Alright, buddy. Talk, little punk. Get hit like a punk. Uh, whatever. Robert squares up into a boxer stance. Queensbury rules. Three minute rounds with one minute rest in between. No low blows for Shooks, J grabs, or high blows. What? How dare you. And don't even think about pulling an illegal turn style. That's an automatic deduction of three points. I... You'll have to designate a second if you're unable to fill your role as main duelist. One of your friends over there looks like he has enough youthful vivacity to handle it. Hey man, I don't want to get dragged into this. That movie sucked. Oh. It's too late. You two are bloodbound. If he dies, you die. How dare you. Sorry, I don't make the rules. Talk to Queensbury. We're just gonna go. Ernest and his friends warily back away. Robert calls after them. Oh. The Queensbury Association will hear about this <laughs> and consume better content. Oh, as if. One of the teens, once the teens are safely out of your shot, Robert turns to me. Were you about to actually fight that kid? <laughs> are you kidding me? I would never hit a child. That would be despicable. <laughs> you throw the rules at him, though. They always bolt. Nobody wants a Queensbury sanction throw down. Oh. But full disclosure, I made half of that up. Wow. <laughs> See? You don't even have to know the rules. You just make them up. Come on, let's get out of here. How dare you. <laughs> Robert and I cool down a bit as we walk out, walk back to the neighborhood. I'm so sorry. I get really into the art of filmmaking when I drink. It's okay. I think it's cool how much you like movies. To be honest, I don't know a lot about them myself. Buddy, I got so much to show you. You ever see any Sam Fuller? No. I haven't. <sighs> Fuller is cash. Thanks for the adventure. Adventure is all I got, buddy. Robert throws an arm around my shoulder and we drunkenly belt out tunes all the way back. We finally get to his doorstep. <sighs> that was an interesting night. I liked it. A smile forms on his cheeks, a rare sight. Mm. Let's hang out again soon, yeah? Yeah. I linger there for a second, swaying drunkenly in the night breeze. Robert claps me on the shoulder. <sighs> night, bud. Robert heads back inside and I stumble my way back home. <laughs> whiskey whiskey bar if it bleeds we can kill it wow okay that was uh welcome interesting you've got dads but uh i'm gonna go ahead and leave that one here thanks for watching hope you enjoyed and i'll see you later